It has got to be the ultimate game of hurry up and wait. And wait and wait and... Yeah, wait a little bit more. Anxiously wondering when your luggage will appear while watching one... That was the last time I saw my bag. After another... After another... And my bag was nowhere to be found. Snatched from the carousel and roll off into sweet freedom. Everybody else's bags came, everybody left, and I had no bag. This is the man with no bag. His name is Matt Bamey, a band member with the Utah National Guard. I play low brass, trombone, and euphonium, my two main instruments. Recently invited to Guam as part of a mobile training team teaching music to kids. So he packed his bag for a week. I had uniforms, two berets and a couple of baseball caps, long ties, bow ties, had combat boots, name tags, name plates, had a, a camera full of pictures. But what he carried back on his way home, I was upwards of $3,700. Had a little more sentimental value, personal gifts from the Guam National Guard. Is that the necklace they gave you? That's, that's the necklace. They gave each that's other. nice. Yeah, they were they were neat. So that's gone. Yeah. Gifts he cannot replace. So once that plane touched ground in Salt Lake City, you can imagine the frustration when the carousel stopped and his bag was nowhere in sight. And when he approached the airline's lost baggage claim. And she literally starts doing this. It should be here. Well, his bag wasn't lost. It was actually scanned when taken off the plane. The belief, it was stolen. Somebody just walked away with it. And that was their excuse. Sorry, somebody walked away with your bag. Hopefully we'll get it back. Access and opportunity, you know, opens opens up the ability to have theft. Craig Vargo is chief of police at Salt Lake International and says there is no logical pattern to the number of baggage thefts in recent history. So, the KSL investigators pulled the numbers and found in the past five years, there's been anywhere from five to 32 bags a year swiped from the carousels. Now compare that to the 20,000 plus travelers making their way through the airport every single day. And those numbers are relatively low. We patrol, we interact, we investigate, we do everything that we can possibly do to make sure that uh, criminals that come out here for an unlawful purpose uh, don't get away with it. In the past few years, airport police caught a guy stealing a bag with contents valued at $1,700 and a male and female duo on multiple occasions grabbing more than $7,000 in luggage and property right off the carousel. So with these luggage thefts, chances are nobody checked the crooks to see if the sticker on the bag actually matched up with a sticker in their hand, which begs the question, why not? I have to show a receipt to get a bag of chips out of Costco, but somebody can walk up and grab my luggage and walk out of the airport with it. How does that work? Well, Matt, why don't we show you here? This is a picture taken from airport surveillance of the man believed to have walked off with your bag. Now, we're going to blur his face here because police aren't quite 100% certain that that is your piece of luggage, but it's certainly leaning that way. In the officer's words, he looked around to see if anybody else was close before he walked over and grabbed it and walked out with it. Do you feel there needs to be someone there checking the tags to make sure they match up with the bags? Not necessarily. Um, that's, that's a business decision that the airport and the airlines have to, have to make. A business decision that financially probably makes a whole lot of sense for the airlines. Hey, why spend money on someone checking tags when roughly .0003% of the bags in Salt Lake are stolen? It's the smallest of fractions here, but on the human side of things, if you are anything like Matt and coming back from a once-in-a-lifetime trip, it's certainly tough to put a price tag on your bag of possessions. Stuff I can't replace. Worth a heck of a lot more than that 0.0003%.